Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Robinson and we are going to review for the grade 8 New York State Mathematics exam. So we're taking some samples from the 2014 exam. Remember if you need help with your homework, there's dial a teacher homework help line at 212-777-3380 Monday through Thursday at 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's 212-777-3380. Also, watch our show, Math Time, comes on Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Cablevision, Channel 15. All right, here we go. Which number is equivalent to 3 to the 4th power divided by 3 to the 2nd power? So we have a multiple choice here. So we have 3 to the 4th power, and we can write that out in expanded form, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and put that over 3 to the second power, which is 3 times 3, and we can cancel out or cancel down this one and that one. We can cancel down this 3 and that 3, and put a 1 there, and we'll be left with just 2 3's, 3 times 3, and let me bring that down there, and that'll be equal to 3 to the second power, and that's another way of saying 9. So our answer would be B, 9. Another way of looking at it, instead of doing the expanded form, shortcut would be when the bases are the same, subtract the exponents. 4 minus 2 gives you 2 as an exponent. So that would be 3 to the second power. And remember, 3 to the second power is 3 times 3, which equals to 9. That's why it was B. Our next question says, determine the product in scientific notation. Well, product is the answer to multiplication. And we have to multiply 800.5 times 2 times 10 to the 6th power and then put it into scientific notation. Well, let me take on the 800 times 2, 800.5 times 2, and that'll give me, well, 800 times 2 is 600, 1600, and 0.5 times 2 would give me 1. So if I add that up, that'll give me 1601. Or you could use your calculator and just multiply it out. So I'd have 1601 times 10 to the 6th power. But that's not scientific notation because I need to put have a decimal point right there. So if I move, I have my decimal point at the end of that, that means I moved it over three spaces. And that makes this number smaller, 1.601. So that means I got to make the exponent, which is 6, larger by adding on the number of places I moved the decimal point. So that would give me 10 to the ninth power. So my answer in scientific notation would be 1.601 times 10 to the ninth power. And that's what I got. So check your understanding. If you understand it so far, great. If you're not sure, rewatch the video and write down your questions. I'll be glad to answer them in class. If figure one can be transformed to create figure two using a single transformation, which transformation can be used to accomplish this? So we're doing a, tr a transformation and they're doing it one time. So they're doing this transformation one time. Well, let's go over. Dilation means the figure one is growing. Well, in this case, it's not growing because figure two looks the same exact size and has the same exact angle and the lengths are still the same. So it's not getting bigger or smaller. Rotation, 
Well, let's see. If I rotated this, it would look like that over there in quadrant one. But that, that doesn't look that, like that. I'd have to rotate it a couple times to get it like that over there. So that... It's no good because it said I had to do it in a single transformation, so I'd have to rotate and probably flip it. So, reflection. That looks more like it to me, a reflection. It's like a mirror standing up on the y-axis. So let's get a line. So, like, there's a mirror right here, and it's the same distance for this point is one box away from this line, this point is one box away, this point is two boxes away, that point is two boxes away, and this is five boxes away from the line, and this is five boxes away from the line. So it's a, I would go with reflection. Translation is you'd have to slide it over to get to this position. So you have to do some sliding in order to get to that position. So the answer would be C. Reflection. All right. Which equation represents the line shown on the coordinate gritty grid below? All right. So we got equations here that we got to choose from, and we got a line with two coordinates on it. So I notice this is on the y-axis, and that's an important point. That means this is the y-intercept, because if you remember, we have a formula, y equal mx plus b, and our m is our slope, but our b is the y-intercept. So it's right, right on the y-axis. So this negative 2 would be what the y intercept is. So, so far we got part of our answer. And I'm looking at my choices. I have negative 2 in A and C. So I automatically eliminate B and D because they have plus 5. So that's not our y intercept. Our y intercept is negative 2. Now, I notice the line goes up. It's pointing up, because if I'm standing here, and I'm looking to the right, it's pointing up, so my slope is positive. So I'm going to automatically eliminate D and choose cho choice number letter A, because it's a positive slope. Now, even if I did not know how to figure out slope, I could do it a couple ways. I could use the point-slope formula, but I'm going to show you by drawing a line get my line tool again, to count up from 0, negative 2. I would count up two boxes, and I, and that's giving me the numerator. And then I would count over to this point right here. That's 4, and halfway between 4 and 6 would be 5. So that's where the point is at 5. So that would be my slope, 2 over 5. Two boxes up, five boxes across. So that way, again, I'm sure my answer would be choice letter A. So that was a nice question. All right, what is the solution to this the equation below? 2 parenthesis x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. Okay, so we got another multiple choice question. Now I notice we have two parentheses x, so that means two times x, and then we got two positive two times a minus three. And then we, when we write that out, we get two x minus six on this side. So we have 2x minus 6 on this side, and is it equal to 2x 
plus 5? Hmm, that's not equal. And even if I suppose I just try to solve it for x, so let's my add 6 to both sides. That would give me 11. And then minus 2x from both sides. The x's would cancel out over here, giving me 0. The 6 is already canceled out. And I got 2x canceled out. And I got 11. 0 does not equal 11. So there's no solution for this. So our answer would be C. No solution because the numbers don't equal. So it's 2x minus 6 doesn't equal to 2x plus 5. And you could look at it and see it doesn't balance. The negative 6 doesn't equal to the positive 5. So that's no solution, C. So check your understanding. See if you understand it so far. If you're still uncertain, write down your questions, and I'll be glad to answer them. Remember, if you need help with your homework, dial a teacher at 212-777-3380 on, on Mondays and Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Remember, watch our show math time, 4.30 to 5 p.m. on Tuesdays, channel 15 on Cablevision. So good luck on your exam. This is Dr. Robinson. I hope to see you again and keep watching our videos and give us a thumbs up if you like them. Thanks.